Hello, my name is Daniel. Today we're going to install a 240 volt receptacle to be able to charge our Nissan Leaf three times faster than with the normal charger that comes with the car. So I hope this video helps you with your own installation. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to find our circuit box, open them up, and take a look at the circuit breakers we already have installed. We need to make sure we have space where we can install our new circuit breaker that's going to handle the 240 volts. And we're also going to want to make sure that the overall rating of the entire circuit board is good enough for installing what's going to be a very powerful circuit breaker, in this case about 30 or 40 amps. So here we have our two circuit breakers. The smaller one here is a sub-panel, which derives from a 60 amp breaker on the main panel. And we're going to notice also, it's important here, how this breaker here is rated at 200 amps. That's going to give us enough amperage to be able to install our 40 amp or 30 amp, in this case it's going to be a 30 amp breaker, and still have enough electricity to power our charger. First thing we want to do is remove the screws that hold the panel in place. In this case, we have six screws that need to be removed. Once they're off, we can proceed to carrying out the full installation. Now we have our panel off and we have the full display of our circuit board uh, that's now accessible so that we can add our circuit breaker. And we see immediately that our spaces where we can uh, add our circuit for our 30 amp circuit breaker for the charger uh, will be in this area here. We're going to have to find a place somewhere on the wall to install our receptacle, which will probably be above 18 inches from the ground uh, in some area in this vicinity. So we also have to decide where we're going to locate our receptacle. A few of the options could be in this area here, somewhere closer to the door, maybe in this area here, or maybe closer to where the front of the car would be, which would be around this area here. Uh, remember, in, in a garage, we'd like to have this receptacle installed approximately at 18 inches, and we're gonna have to find a way also to run our wires from the main circuit board to wherever it is that we decide finally to place the receptacle box. Here's all you really need to make this installation happen. First of all, a 30 amp circuit breaker, the receptacle that's going to go into the wall, the cover of the receptacle, and a 10 gauge wire to match the 30 amps that we're using for the breaker. That's about 40, 50 bucks total from Home Depot. Okay, here we are defining the height of our receptacle. After a little bit of research, uh, there seems to not be a code specifically about height from the floor or from uh, distance from the electrical panel. Uh, but the rule of thumb seems to be about 18 inches. So we've decided to go about 24 inches in this area right about here, which will take us a uh, quite a way away from the panel and a good clearance from the floor. Part of the regulation seems to be focused on the risks of fumes or of any materials that might fall on the floor that could affect the receptacle. Uh, in this case, for example, if a gasoline from the car or exhaust fumes or, or other elements that might be flammable might make it to the receptacle. But uh, at 24 inches, I think we're going to be okay. So we're going to take our receptacle and we're going to mark the area where we're going to install it approximately so that we can drill our hole. Uh, and we don't want to, want to make sure that uh, we don't make the hole too big. That's going to be important. So mark around the edges so you know more or less where you're going to be drilling our hole. Now we want to make sure uh, that we're not drilling into any uh, wires or anything. There shouldn't be anything in this area. I'm banging 
around the area to make sure that there's no stud in this place either. It seems to be hollow, so we should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and drill a few holes. mark the area we're going to be making a hole. There seems to be a stud of something there. So I hit it luckily right near the place where I had to drill. Okay, that should do it. So with a little handsaw, we should be able to cut our hole. Okay, there's a hole. Okay, so we've uh, cut out our hole. Now we're gonna take our receptacle, make sure it fits, clean out the edges if necessary, that fits nicely. There is an up and a down to it. So that's basically where our receptacle is gonna be and eventually when we're ready to go, we'll be able to cover it with the cover. Uh, for the moment, We'll stop there, now we'll be focused uh, on getting the wiring through. Okay, so now we want to pop out one of these little circles here where we're going to run our wire through and that's going to go down to the box. So just with a screwdriver, we can pry one of these open and then we move it back and forth a little bit, it should pop right out. So we next threaded the 10 gauge wire through the panel down to where we're going to put our receptacle. Okay. okay, so we have our three wires coming out here. Uh, notice we have a black and a white, that's going to be our two positives, and then a stripped copper wire, that's going to be our ground. And if we look at our receptacle, we notice that there is a green connector that's for the ground and we can use either one of these two for the black and the white respectively. So we're gonna get those, those wires, the two white and black on the bottom and the green right up to the ground. And that should do it. Okay, so there we've wired our receptacle. You'll notice that there is a groove right, in, right there for the 10 gauge wire to fit smoothly in there so you can tighten uh, nice and hard without them falling out. We've got everything connected and we're ready to go. And so we're going to slip this receptacle as far in as we can, leaving a little bit of extra wire in the event uh, we ever have to make any adjustments. So next we mount the receptacle into the wall with two drywall screws. And after it's mounted, we place the cover on it. Go sideways like this. Okay, and that'll be it right there. Four screws on, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so there we have our mounted receptacle, and then we will now proceed to connecting the wires to the panel. There we go. Okay, first of all, we're going to put one of these uh, bushings over the cable and slip that right into the hole here, and that will ensure that if this cable is ever pulled, out of its uh, out of the box or into the box that the sharp edges of the box won't cut into the cable. Okay so we've run our line right up the back there you can see the orange line going up and then we've turned it in and we're going to go ahead and put the circuit breaker right there at the top connecting to those three uh, those three bare lines that we have there. So the two, the black, and the white will go to the positives, 
and the copper wire will go to the ground. Okay, so if you see here, we've connected now the breaker. Uh, still not connected to the power line, so there's no electricity yet running through these wires, uh, but we have to be careful not to touch the live uh, metal, metal lines in the back here because those are, those are hot. But we've prepared the line coming out here, uh, and it comes out to the breaker. We put the black and the white indistinctly. It doesn't really matter which they go into, but they're each uh, in their screws and tightened. And we are left with the copper line, which is this line here, which will run into the back uh, line where the other grounds uh, neutrals are. Uh, we're going to do that only after we've cut the main circuit, which is this one here. Uh, for the moment, we're going to pause and do it tomorrow when nobody's using the electricity in the house. Otherwise, they're not going to like it. Just a few modifications. We've labeled the orange cable. It says uh, 240 volt electric car port. That will allow any future person uh, entering this panel to know that that's the cable. Uh, we've also shortened it a little bit, uh, peeled back the plastic. We've exposed the copper wire so that's ready for connection into the uh, neutral port. And we've got our two positive wires there, the, the white and the black, waiting for the circuit breaker. And we will connect that as soon as we have a moment. We're all ready to go. We're connected with our wires to the circuit breaker. The bare copper ground wires ready to be connected to the bar. And we're going to go ahead and then cut the power and plug this puppy right into the board right there. So it should be pretty straightforward. Be back with you in a moment. Okay, we've got our circuit breaker in. It's nice and snug clicked in perfectly. We've got our cables, the both uh, positive white and black in their place. And also you can see back there the top wire, the ground wire in the background, that's the ground wire. So it's all ready to go. We've uh, given it the go by turning it on. Nothing has short circuited, so it looks like we've done this properly. We've already set up our outlet as such, it's labeled 240 volt electric carport, and we could also test electricity. Uh, the positives will be these two here, and it should turn on the 240, and there we see the light for 240 volts uh, go on. So it looks like we've done well. It's all installed. Now we simply have to put the cover back on, and we're set to go. Okay, so here we are tightening up the screws on the cover. And that should do it. So for under 50 bucks, we've been able to install a receptacle for 240 volt. We're going to be able to use this to charge our car, Nissan Leaf, with the new charger that we've already ordered. And the charge time is going to go down from 21 hours to about five or six. I think that's a great uh, investment for very little money. Here's the breaker we've just installed. It's working. And there you have it, folks. We've installed our 240 receptacle for charging our electric vehicle. Nice and neat. In conspicuous place. Right near the circuit breaker. Near the garage door. And we're set to go. Just plug in and charge. Hope you liked the video.